<laughs> Cheers, y'all. Well, 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 well. That's the beginning of a good time, my friends. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this fine radio program known internationally as the world famous Smoking and Toasting. This radio program, podcast, and video extravaganza that is now at show number 254. Dude, we are. Halfway to 300. We are, and it's, it's exciting to be halfway to 300. <laughs> uh, clearly, this is not a math podcast, but we're all about uh, we're all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars. Adam, can I get just a touch more headphones, please? Uh, craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars are what we are all about, and we are brought to you by MyCigarShirts.com. Uh, it is a great shirt for cigar lovers on the web. Holiday season is uh, right around the corner. You might as well get started buying gifts now, and a great place to buy them for people who love cigars. Like me, like me, is uh, mycigarshirts.com. So be sure and check them out. They are a sponsor of the show, mycigarshirts.com, because cigars. Yes, sir. Want to say a big thank you to the Briar Shop in Rice Village in Houston. We did the show from there last week, uh, and it was a lot of fun. I love that place, and we want to say thanks to our good buddy. Uh, Trenton Smith from Oliva, who joined That's, us there. Yeah, Trenton's so fun. And how good was that new limited edition oh, Oliva uh, Serie V? I, like, well, as soon as that release is out, I'm buying a box. Yes, There's well, no doubt. It's, it's, it was just fantastic. Yep. Just absolutely fantastic. So uh, thank you, Trenton, for being on the show. And then you and I got to see Trenton uh, a couple nights afterwards. At the comedy show we talked about. Because he joined us yeah. at the uh, uh, Vintage Whiskey and Comedy Showcase that our buddies uh, Chris Hart and Alan Denny uh, put on. And that was a lot of fun. Did you enjoy it? I had a blast. Yeah, we all just... sat out in front right before the show and had a cigar. and Yeah. And, uh, Tasted yeah. some excellent whiskeys. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, so the way that it worked, and I assume this is the way it'll work when they do it again, was it, you showed up and like presented your ticket, and then once they scanned your ticket, they asked you which whiskey you wanted. It was what, maybe they like gave you, they, seven, eight different whiskeys With your they ticket had. scan, they yeah. gave you a... Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, nice I have a list here. The list was fantastic, and it was a vintage whiskey thing. Yeah, so these are uh, all old. These the are all Chris old, Hart bottles. The only one that he had that wasn't an old whiskey that you can get was the uh, 2021 Prideful Goat 15-year Kentucky bourbon. That's and, the one I had. Right, right, yeah. and that was good. They also had a 2002 Russell's Reserve, uh, a 1996... 15 year Anderson Club, the 1989 Kentucky Prince, which is what I had. Yeah, that so was amazing. That is what my wife had, and she isn't a big whiskey person, but she loved uh, it. Man, it was so good. Loved they had a 1988 yep. Old Taylor, six year, and a 1978 Wild Turkey, 101, eight year. And last but not least, the 1975 Medley Bourbon, which is what my wife got, and she really and loved she liked that. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, it, so it was a great time. The comics were funny. Uh, the the bar had Blanton's. It was, uh, it was a pretty good night. Yeah, you know, uh, I don't. I don't I don't get Blanton's all that often because it's just hard to find. And, right. I, and I love Blanton's, but I'm not going to pay secondary prices for it. I'm just right. not. It's right. a 60-something dollar bottle, and, and I'm okay if I find it at that price, but I don't. You don't go after it and pay 100 But when they have it at the bar and it's yeah. a reasonable price, I'll, you know, I'll I think, have it. And I did enjoy some Blanton's. I think bars get it easier than retail shops. Well, I think they get, they get primary, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, primary pick on that. Primary consideration, yeah. So anyway, very cool Bars stuff. might spend more money on whiskey than me. So on today's show, this is exciting. All right. The hottest breweries in America. Okay, so you're talking about like in the middle of the summer in Houston, right? Because that's where the hottest <laughs> breweries the are. Hottest. Yeah, no, I, I think it's. I, I think it's. You're the talking other about hottest hot. is in like the, yeah, yeah. the most. These uh, are the ones that are on the rise. The ones right, that right, okay. uh, the ones that have been picked as being, um, you know, significant and and growing and and. Oh, that should be a fun list. <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see, you know, because there's so many breweries. I think we talked about this in the show last week, but I read that there. In the Houston area alone, there's like 60 crap breweries. So if I just Six zero. If, if I just pop on um, <coughs> uh, uh, Google Maps mm -hmm. and just put brewery and have it, you know, as the you know on the map is the whole Houston area because they'll search the area that's on the uh, yeah. map right there. Uh, there's always the ones that I expect, and then a few others. I'm like, what is this? And it's and breweries it's that are about to open up. Yeah, and things something like you that. haven't so, seen before. Right, it's about to, right. Yeah, it's I know. Crazy. It's great. It's great. There's always a bunch so of those. So if you think about, you know, a metro area like ours having 60, 
and then how many there are going to be in other large cities, and then how many of them are like in smaller cities, like yeah. uh, you know, smaller towns where that's what they've done. Like think about like Magnolia, Texas yep. has got uh, uh, Yellow Rose. Oh, uh, or, I'm sorry, Lone Pine. Lone Yellow Pine Rose makes is, Yellow Rose. Yeah, yeah Lo- Lo- Yellow Rose is one of their beers. But but I mean, there's so, so there's so many so many breweries. So to have a list that's singling out the 34 top hottest rising current ones, this should be it'd be interesting to see if you or I have had a beer. From any of these, and how who, many? whose list is this? Uh, I I got to go back and look. I think it's Thrillist. But okay, I'll, Thrillist I'll, is always fun. Yeah, I'll double check. Uh, yes, it is Thrillist. The thirty four hottest breweries in America right now. Right now. Yeah. So we're looking forward to looking forward to that list. Lists are always fun on the show, but ones like that are, are even even more fun than usual. I think so. Have that to look forward to. We will have uh, uh, a report on cigars to look for. There's some new things coming to shops, and you might nice. be on the lookout for those. And, oh, this is so exciting. We have a tequila report from our tequila expert, Ooh. Liliana Rodriguez. Yeah, she sent it. We, it arrived yesterday. And I just glanced at it and said, oh, this is going to be so much fun on the show. Because she, this woman knows her tequila. So this is our first smoking and toasting tequila report brought actually, to you by Liliana. She's actually done this once before. Oh. Yeah. So, it, so we've second. had once before. So this is our second one. Yes. So and that's not including of course when she comes on the show yes. and delivers the tequila report here. So uh, she sent it and said it was for drinking news, but I'm like none of this is weird or goofy, so uh, we'll just make it the tequila report and we'll still have drinking news, oh. which is as as you know one of our favorite seg- one of our most popular segments on the show. I'm not sure why. I think it might be the theme song. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be the theme it song. It must be the theme song. So that will be coming up on the show, and uh, we're going to be doing some... Do, do we have a Drinking News teaser headline? Oh, we do, actually. The Drinking News teaser headline is, That's Not How I Remember Learning the Alphabet. <laughs> oh, nice. So we'll look forward to uh, revealing that for you. And I love the... I love the teaser music. That's just right. it builds such suspense it's, and, it's and the suspenseful anticipation. Ukulele music. Yes, ukulele is a very suspenseful instrument. Well, I was going to say I don't think I don't think the ukulele is a very suspenseful. I instrument. I think it's so underused in horror movies. I think you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they could they could use it right before that that uh, you know, that time in the movie where they decide to hide in the basement or uh, uh, or like behind the wall of chainsaws, like on that Geico commercial. You know? <laughs> Let's hide behind the wall of Chainsaws. Um, <laughs> uh, what was that? Did you see that? Uh, 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 something and Tucker versus Evil. What was that movie that came out that was kind of a spoof on all the? Oh, on all I, the... I know what you're talking. About. I'm thinking of the Scary Movie uh, series. Right now, there was but, one uh, called Dale and Tucker versus Evil. Watch it. Okay, Dale. It's, Dale and Tucker versus Evil. It's it's so funny. You get your movie uh, recommendations right here on Smoking and Toasting. <laughs> it's we do a it's so bit stupidly of funny. Yeah. We will also be uh, doing some beer sampling today. Oscar Blues has, I don't know if this is new, but it's the first time I had seen it, I like so I Oscar grabbed Blues. one. Uh, they have a, uh, a product called Can O Bliss. It's a hazy IPA. I've seen it. I haven't tried it. And, you know, uh, Oscar Blues now has locations uh, in three different places. Longmont, Colorado, uh, which I believe was the original one, uh, Brevard, North Carolina, and Austin, Texas. So they have an Oscar Blues brewery nice. in Austin now. I need to get so, in touch with them and see if they'll give me a bike to do the MS-150 ooh, on. Ooh, that'd be good. Wouldn't that be nice? That'd be awesome. I'm sure they love but giving Oscar away bikes Blues to random people. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're going to taste their beer. If we uh, give it high marks, maybe that'll help your cause. <laughs> Could be. Um, a brewery that I have been to is uh, Shipyard Brewing Company out of Portland, Maine. Uh, Shipyards, that's a great brewery. And they take beer very we've had, seriously. We've had a Maine. few Shipyard beers on here, yes, and they've we have. all been very good. I think we may have actually had this one before when we did our pumpkin uh, beer blind taste test. I do remember that, yes. Because this the is Shipyard the Shipyard one, being quite Smashed good. Pumpkin. Ooh, nice. So we'll, we'll try it. Outside of the not uh, smashing pumpkins, yeah, but smashed, but smashed pumpkins. yeah, already. Yeah. Smashing is is you know current tense, and smashed is already dealt with. Smashed that's, pumpkin. That's the uh, tribute band. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> some of those tribute band names are so clever, though. Yeah, yeah. You know, some of them they just like. I have take a buddy of mine that plays in one. They're a Black Crows uh, tribute band called yeah. the Black Rose. Ah, oh, see, that's good. So if you say it fast, it's the, the Black, Black Rose. Rose. Right. And what was the what was the band you were telling me about uh, earlier today that you saw one of their posters at the old 
concert oh, cafe. Uh, so over at the uh, last concert cafe, the walls were covered uh, for years. They were covered with uh, band promo pics, and one 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 of them that always stuck with me that I thought was funny was called Mo and the Lawn. That is so good. <laughs> that is Mo and the Lawn. Mo and the Lawn. That's so good. Uh, we will also be tasting, and I think you're going to be excited about this one, Ian, from Phase Three Brewing Company. Very good, reputable brewer. We've had them on the show. We've had their uh, beer on the show before, but today we'll be tasting their Pressed Imperial Porter. They oh, are, I'm impressed. They are uh, from Lake Zurich, Illinois, so I'm looking forward to that. And if we can get a shot of Mr. Twirly Gig where uh, the bottle is spinning, uh, you will see that we are also going to be tasting some Clement Select Barrel French Caribbean Rum. And it is uh, from Martinique. Have we had a Martinique rum? I don't think we have. I think so that's, a, that's a new thing. Rum there. can be you know, made, uh, unlike tequila, which has to be made in a very specific location, rum can be made almost anywhere, but it is generally on an island or somewhere in the Pacific. So uh, it's a pretty cool uh, uh, Caribbean area, usually. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. That should, that should be good. Uh, plus, I think I mentioned the, um, the uh, cigar update. We'll have uh, cigars to watch for. And if we have a chance to get to it, we'll uh, try to talk about the world's most underrated whiskeys, according to the experts, or at least according to some of the experts, because apparently some of the experts apparently uh, Christopher Hart was not polled for this particular list. So I don't know how they could have left it out to you. <laughs> I have no idea. So, so uh, it's been an interesting week. Uh, uh, Ian, what about? Uh, I know, in fact, you've had a chance to smoke. Something interesting because I actually was you sitting across from you, staring at, me staring at you while you were smoking. Smoking it, but, a cigar. So why don't you uh, Why don't you tell us about where your uh, where your was, cigar journey led you this week? I was just in a panic looking up to see exactly what the uh, construction of this cigar was because I uh, talking about the uh, the uh, the uh, cigar that I had because I forgot to put that down because I was too busy chatting with you well, and visiting. Tell everybody what so the cigar what I had, was. What I had I, was I the uh, San Latano Requiem by A.J. Fernandez. And mm -hmm. apparently, looking on here, uh, it is a um, Ecuadorian Habano wrapper with mm -hmm. Nicaraguan binder and Nicaraguan and uh, Ecuadorian fillers. Now mm -hmm. I will get on with my... Uh, with my uh, with your thoughts regarding uh, thoughts this cigar. regarding this, yeah. so uh, the this was the uh, five by fifty four robusto. I just want to stop and say you're smoking like one of my favorites this week. I you this know I picked is... that up when I when I saw it and it looked interesting. You said that's one of my favorites, so I said you know let's see if he actually has taste. Okay, we'll I mean see. he does like IPAs. <laughs> You like IPAs. <laughs> I do. I just like saying that because it's funny. <laughs> All right. So this was the Robusto 5x54, the appearance, ruddy brown, veiny, a little um, firm overall. Had a little kind of a leathery feel to the uh, to the uh, uh, outside leaf. Uh, San Latano label on it and an A.J. Fernandez label right underneath it. Pre-light sniff on this, earthy and sweet coffee with chocolate mm -hmm. and a slight barnyard flavor in the background. It was really nice. I used uh, I used a clip on this. Uh, it had about a medium draw and a pre light draw on this with cedar and chocolate with coffee and pepper. A little pepper right up front on that. You're always going to get a little bit of chocolate. Oh, on that plus, cigar. it's a cigar you like. It's always going to have some pepper in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. The initial light on this had the pepper blast. It had it right up front. A uh, uh, nice big full flavored pepper blast. Uh, tangy leather on the lips. Uh, kind of taste round chocolate at the back of the palate, sweet cedar retrohale on it. The first third of this went right in, kept that cedar and tangy pepper going on uh, 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 right up front, uh, with the uh, backed by bitter chocolate and leather. This was this was great flavors. Like mm -hmm. this was absolutely fantastic. It has a, um, a slight underlying sweetness the whole time that was really interesting, and I couldn't put my finger on what exactly it was, but there were some fun flavors that showed up in here. The retro hail was cedar and earthy chocolate, uh, solid ash, uneven burn. The um, second third of this pepper moves back. Uh, a little bit making room for leather. Dark fruitiness showed up a little mm -hmm. bit underlying there. The earth and bitter chocolate with underlying sweetness. That sweetness was just there. And a slight nuttiness happened about the middle of the cigar. Just a little bit of like a, but a sweet kind of nuttiness, like cashews or a little mm -hmm. bit sweet. Those kind like of things. Like a softer um, nuttiness. Yeah. Right, right. Um, uh, fantastic. The retro hair was cedar and chocolate with a hint of leather. Solid ash, uneven burn. Mm-hmm. The last third of the cigar, overall sweetness moves forward a little bit, actually. You think uh, a lot of times the pepper will 
move we'll, forward yeah, in we'll the, in the towards of, the end of this. But the sweetness actually uh, built up a little bit, and I really enjoyed that. Uh, cedar, leather, bitter chocolate remain constant. Touches of dark fruit in the background. The retro hail is cedar and chocolate, solid ash, good burn. I never tended this cigar. It, it uh, You could see in the pictures that it actually started burning uneven right from the start a little bit. But it, by the time you got to the last third, it sort of straightened itself uh, yeah, out. I never tended it. It just mm. never got that far out of out of its uh, out of you know a realm of an okay burn that I just never bothered with, and that's okay with me. Like if I don't have to tend it and it evens itself out by the last third, I'm super happy with that. This was an eight dollar and five cent cigar. Six point five. Wow. Six and a half, man. This wow. is this was a fantastic cigar. It's a wonderful cigar. cigar. I just I was so excited for you to smoke and it. Because... San Latano, you guys are crushing it. AJ Fernandez, you're crushing it. That was a, such a great cigar that I will be buying plenty more of those in the future. I will just say and I it mean, also burned a long time too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's a shorter cigar. I right? got over an hour out of that cigar. So I just you know, I'm an admitted fanboy mm -hmm. of uh, of AJ Fernandez. But that said, I mean, more so than just about any other cigar maker I can think of, I I feel like I can totally recommend anything that he was involved in. I've never had one of his cigars that I've said, okay, I like most of his stuff, but nah, that one was just okay. Like, I feel like everything of his that I've had has been good to great. You know what uh, turned me on really to A.J. Fernandez initially is uh, I, I've had a few A.J. Fernandez cigars, and I always enjoyed them. But we ended up at Stogie's one day. This was years ago. This was pr probably four years ago. Yeah. Uh, we ended up at Stogie's one day, and A.J. Fernandez was there. And we got to meet him, uh, and he had a translator at the time, so mm -hmm. he didn't speak a lot of English. And... Um, and so, you know, he we had said on his hi. AJ hat. Oh, yeah. He, he, <laughs> dude, he looked as AJ Fernandez as he can. Like, it was <laughs> totally, amazing. Totally. Uh, uh, and, uh, and he was so nice. And we ended up splitting a box of the. You and I did. It was the uh, Connecticut Broadleaf. Yes. And it was so good. It was the Enclave Connecticut Broadleaf cigars. So good. So yeah. good. Um, and, uh, and then ever since then, the Bella Artes, the, all, the, all mm -hmm. those. All this. And then I started finding out, you started pointing this out a lot, is a lot of those uh, cigar brands that I you know, don't know a whole lot about just ended up having uh, having been blended by A.J. Fernandez. Or like at least Nico him Libre's with like, or like the... Uh, right, right. The, uh, uh, what's the... Uh, uh, Man of War. The those, Man of War, yeah. yeah. All those, and those the Ave are, Maria. Ave Maria, all mm -hmm. those. Uh, those are A.J. blends and they're all great cigars. And uh, you reviewed one recently... That was an aging room uh, that yes. he, that he was involved in, and you yes. gave me one of those for my Did birthday. You smoke that yet? Not yet. I'm, oh, I'm, oh, I'm oh. very excited about it. But I've almost almost smoked it twice, and I've thought, no, there'll be a day where I'll like. There'll be a day soon where I'll be. I'm not going to save it too long, but there'll be a day soon when I go. Okay, today's the today's day for the that. Day. You'll yeah. know. You know yeah. when it happens. Yeah, exactly. So, so you actually did not review the cigar that you smoked this morning with. Me. No, because I had one uh, earlier in the week yeah, that, had I, one of that socks, I wanted to so talk to about. So I remember that uh, you had. Um, uh, I mentioned that you'd give me uh, that cigar for my birthday, mm -hmm. and also a nice little Cuban in the tube. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Uh, but I, I told my wife this year. She's like. What do you want people to get you if they ask me, you know, for suggestions for your birthday? I was like, cigars, always cigars. Yeah, that's not hard. That's never a bad. G I I never I, I never like, open a gift and it's cigars and go, oh, I, I wish they like got me cigar something else. Accessories. You know? Oh yeah, absolutely. I've gotten you cigar accessories <laughs> yeah. for your birthday before. Actually, so I, I, you know, I have I didn't have a lot of cigar ashtrays. I now have a collection of ashtrays mm -hmm. due to you mostly. Yeah, see, see. So there's. Uh, and there's more where that came from, my friend. Uh, but for my birthday, which was uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, people followed my wife's advice, and I got cigars from several different people. So um, uh, my our good friend Lionel, uh, who doesn't know anything about cigars, uh -huh. went to a cigar shop and you know uh, bought a couple of sticks and just you know kind of said, just recommend me something good. And one of the sticks he came uh, and gave me for my birthday I'd never seen before. And that's the one I'm going to talk about a little bit today. It is a it's a Bocock Brothers World Traveler Honduras Toro. And I have never heard of that. Every time I say the word Bocock, I feel like I'm on a Saturday Night Live skit <laughs> where you just try to say that word. As much. Remember, remember, like the cork soaker uh, skit. <laughs> right. Yeah, it, it seems seems a lot like that. But anyway, Bocock Brothers. I, I was further shocked to find out 
they're from right here in our backyard. The Bocock brothers are from Houston. Really? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, as I mentioned, I got this uh, as a birthday gift, and they are actually based uh, right where we are, Houston, Texas. Bryant and Doug Bocock are the Bocock brothers. So it's not like a made-up name. Um, we although need they them do on have, the show. Although they... When did we have them on I the show? I said we need them oh, on the show. Oh, we need them on the show. Oh, yeah, I was yeah. like, are you kidding me? No. We had them on the show and no, no. I don't remember? <laughs> no, we <laughs> I was need like, them I on the show. I know I'm getting old, but boy. Right, right. Uh, so, all right. So, Brian and Doug Bocock uh, are the Bocock brothers. It has the the rooster mm-hmm. on the cigar label, which you'll see in, in the, the photos. Uh, so, Brian apparently co-owned and managed a nightclub in Honduras for a number of years. And when that closed... Um, he came back to the U.S. While he was there, though, they added a humidor to the bar, and uh, it was a big success, which, you know, we've been to Honduras, so we know uh, tobacco is kind of a way of life there, right. uh, but particularly cigar tobacco. There's so many great cigar companies there. And uh, in any case, when he moved back, he wanted to get into the cigar business. So he and his brother Doug started Bocock Premium Cigars, and their first uh, their first offerings were something called the World Traveler. And the World Traveler is a, a nice-looking cigar uh, with a... Uh, really light brown uh, wrapper and mm-hmm. uh, a, a nice blue and gold band with the, uh, you can see the rooster on it there. I see that. Yeah. Um, very, very nice looking cigar. Um, the wrapper is Habano uh, and the binder is Sumatra and the tobacco is from both Nicaragua and Honduras. Uh, the pre light on it is very, very, very much a sweet. Hay kind of aroma, you know, uh-huh. you you know that sort of. Uh, we talk about barnyard, but that usually is a little more pungent. This is more of the, just kind of a sweet hay. Like if you're standing next to a hay bale after it has rained and and it's a little dead, right, you, know, you know that right. that sort of sweet hay uh, smell. Anyway, there was also a hit a hint of cedar and nuts. I used a punch, and I lit it up. Got a nice volume of smoke right away, and uh, then I <clears throat> got. A nice sort of miniature pepper blast mm-hmm. on on the first uh, part of it, but it wasn't too uh, wasn't too big, and then it backed off a little as it, as I drew in on the cigar. Um, there definitely was still pepper. In fact, pepper stayed pretty much through the whole stick. But I got a little bit of a caramel note and some other spice, like a mulling spice sort of a, right, a, a vibe right. to it. Um, the World Traveler pretty much started out with a crooked burn, which I was a little disappointed on that. I got a little canoe running up one side right as it started, so I was a little worried. It did even itself out over time uh, as I smoked it, uh, but it was still just enough to make one side of the cigar burn just a little hotter than Uh the other. It wasn't like terribly distracting, but it made me wonder a little bit if it was affecting the flavors because the, the cigars cigars are rolled and designed right. for you to get all the flavors of the tobacco at once right. as you're burning it, and so if one part of it's burning hotter than the other, that can that can impact it a little bit. But uh, anyway, I'll have to smoke another one to be able to compare it, and hopefully that. That little uh, man, the, the thing was the things that you put yourself. Through I know. In the well, name of, it's it's research. I'm yes, committed to research, and research. that's uh, you know science is for science. Um, the uh, pepper remained in the second third, although it now seemed a little more like red pepper, a little more defined. Um, I would say that um, there was more caramel in the second third, and uh, a hint of cedar that I got uh, in the pre-light draw. I kind of picked that up now, mm-hmm. and uh, it was uh, starting to starting to be really good. The flavors evolved as it smoked, which I really like. You know, some cigars, you kind of get the flavor profile, and it stays very much the same all the way through. In this case, they'd evolve. Some would move to the front and then move to the back when you got a little further in, uh, and I enjoyed the I enjoyed the change. Uh, I really, really was enjoying it. Um, final third uh, ramped up just a little bit in power. Uh, caramel notes kind of moved to the front. There was a nice nuttiness that developed, uh, as well as some earthiness. Um, you get that a little with Honduran tobacco. You know that flavor I'm talking yeah, about? Think yeah. back to like Aladino and that, that, that rich distinct earth, rich that, earth yeah, yeah. That, that we had uh, in all of those cigars. Um, and then it, it also had the distinct flavor of a Caribbean roasted leek turtle soup. 
Fantastic. I'm just joking. I don't know what to say about that. I'm just joking about that. I just wanted to see if anybody was paying Made attention. Made on the east side yeah. of the island. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but anyway, um, forget about that. Anyway, overall, the World Traveler uh, was just a touch more than medium bodied. Best thing about it, I think, was the way the flavors evolved, like, mm-hmm. I, like I mentioned. And uh, a different notes kind of coming to the front and, and changing as it went. Uh, it was rich and... Um, other than the initial canoe, the construction actually seemed mm-hmm. quite good on it. I actually did not ever touch it up, which is kind oh, of and like it you just were worked itself your, out, and, yeah. right? And and I won't say it went to a completely straight burn, but it, it was straight enough that oh, I wasn't you know, worried about it. You know, when I get a little bit of a crooked burn like that, I'll mentally challenge the cigar right, to straighten yeah. itself up. All right, up. buddy, you, you get your act <laughs> together. Uh, the World Traveler Habano Toro is a nine to ten dollars stick, um, and a nice change up for me. Uh, that said, at ten bucks. A pop. There's an awful lot of cigars it's competing with, in that price range, you know. Uh, and so you, in your head, you start comparing it. Well, is this, you know, is this as good as the, uh, mm-hmm. as the uh, Dias de Gloria by uh, right, AJ or right. something like that? Um, it was good. I don't know that it scored a knockout punch, but price to quality, I'm going to give it what I call a shaky five. Okay. Uh, you know, we we often say a solid five. Right. This is, right. A, this shaky is a shaky five, five. <laughs> uh, and and it could be that uh, another one would deliver better without the little canoeing thing and and burning just a little hot on one side. But uh, I definitely want to smoke another one because of my commitment to research. And uh, let's just see. Let's just now, see how I that goes. I enjoyed them. it though very much. I haven't seen them in uh, too many shops around here. It could be just because I'm it's not on my radar and I wasn't looking for it, mm-hmm. but I haven't seen a whole lot of those. Well, I, I, I don't, think I've ever I seen don't know. Actually. I think that there is actually a Bocock Brothers cigars on Main Street. So maybe we need to uh, do some more research and, and go uh, check them out. Because I'm wondering if that may be, I think it's Main Street or Milam. Uh, I, I think that may be where my friend bought these. I know he lives downtown. So he may have just gone to the shop closest to him, which I would guess would be McCoy's, but maybe he found this on his you know, phone or something. In All any right. case, it was good. I enjoyed it. And I definitely want to smoke another one, so I'll be searching them out. I did see online they were at the last big trade show because Half Wheel did an article on them uh, on their booth from, from right. the trade show. And uh, so anyway, worth checking out. Listen, when we have cigar companies that are based here, it's like the guys from Emperor's Cut, who we're going to have on the show again in a couple of weeks. Yeah, those uh, are fun. Those were, and those were great cigars. Those guys were a lot of fun. Yeah, they, were, they were great yeah. guests on the show. So anyway, so we have all of that to look forward to, and uh, we have beers to look forward to. And I don't know about you, but um, I'm looking forward to our first one, the Oscar Blues Can of Bliss. We'll get to that in the next segment. You are checking out Smoking and Toasting, and we will be right back with beer and rum, my friends. Let's open with that. So Welcome back, my friends. Smoking and Toasting is the program that's so all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. We're going to get into cigars and some craft beer here in just a moment. But uh, Ian, I can I can feel your phone vibrating over there. The the, <laughs> the show comments must be rolling in today. I want to point out, uh, Bruce uh, put a comment up here. Sounds like Cruz always likes a punch for cigars. He says he's fond of uh, V cuts himself. So um, when we first started the show, Cruz always used a clip. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always used a punch, and the reason I always used a punch is because I had a lighter that had a punch built into it. Right, so and it was I always am, there. I am very much, uh, if I can have one tool to do those jobs, mm-hmm. you know, then mm-hmm. I don't have to carry extra stuff in my pocket. That's very much me. Um, and so it was actually the reverse for a long time. And then Cruz got that great little set of scissors, yeah, and used that all the time because he had to multi-tool uh, with the scissors and use that all the time. But then. Um, uh, a funny thing happened. Um, you got um, a present from your wife. I did. It was a Christmas present. And I actually this have it with me. Beautiful keychain punch. It is wonderful. I don't carry it a lot because I don't want to mess it up. Right, a, right. But it's what I usually have at home. Right. And uh, and so yeah, it's a keychain punch, and both sides unscrew. There's a larger uh, punch apparatus in there, and you and a nice little. 
a little you know, plunger to pop out plunger, the, uh, yeah. uh, the plug that you've taken out. And then this one is uh, is a little bit smaller. So yes, I love it, and I carry it. You know, I don't carry it all the time, but I but I have it all the time. It's out all the time. Yeah, at home. that is that so is that's a, what I generally will uh, cut my cigars right. With so that's a fantastic thing. And then another thing happened uh, almost around the same time as uh, I was visiting a friend of mine in New Orleans, and he didn't have a good. He had some of the plastic cigar cutters and stuff mm-hmm. like that, but I had a nice metal one. Um, that was that was you know my favorite cigar cutter and um and I said man you don't have a good cigar cutter here you can have this I gave that to him and then I went up to Casa one day to have my cigar and yep. I was looking for a cigar cutter and I found this great little I think I might have left it uh, in my car but I found this great little flat Zycar it's really cutter thin, it's right? real thin real yeah. flat would fit in the pocket real easy and I thought that's a good one and I'm standing there looking at it and Steve goes you know they make a lighter that 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 sticks to magnetically I said well. I, 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 my budget's only so much. He goes, "What if I give you a discount?" I was like, <laughs> "You bastard!" <laughs> and so now, yeah, thanks a lot for giving me a discount. Now I always use a clip because it's stuck it's to right, my lighter. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely love it. So we've I, kind of reversed on that. Well, and, and I, I think do, it's partly convenience. You know? I do love a V cut. I don't have V cuts a, are great. I don't have a good V cut. I have a plastic one, and sometimes I will use it just because I I do that. But when I'm at uh, like well, and it wasn't the cigar I reviewed today, but. Uh, I smoked a cigar while you were doing your cigar review uh-huh. today. We were at Casa together, and I was excited to use the the big V cut with the handle. Uh, yeah, right, and I, right. And I did the, a V cut on the that stationary baby. one. Yeah, yeah, those are yeah. nice. And you know, it's it's a funny thing because when I when I when all I had was the cigar lighter with the uh, punch built into the bottom of it. Um, I would have to be careful which cigars I grab out of my humidor if I was going out that evening because I'd have to grab something that I could punch. So I wouldn't grab a torpedo, or uh, a lot of times a perfecto if it had a pointer, uh, you know, torpedo style end on it or anything mm-hmm. like that. I always had to grab something that had a round end on it. Uh, but now that I have the cutter on there, I can go with pretty much whatever. I do like V cuts, uh, and V cuts especially on. Um, on a larger gauge cigar, I like mm-hmm. the V cuts a yep. lot. I, I, I um, agree. And there's there's pluses and minuses to all of them. The punch I really enjoy. Uh, when, and I have a uh, sitting outside in my smoking area in the back. I have a punch and a clip out there, you know, so that whatever cigar I bring out there and do that. So I always punch first, and, and then, then clip if you need to. And then if the draw isn't quite right, I'll clip. But yeah. I always punch first at home. So it's kind of a funny. Like these are the habits we get into, right? Mm, right. Yeah, well, and ultimately, I just like cigars. So yeah, whether you so, punch it, clip yeah, it, V cut it, yeah. or and I have done this, cut off the end with my cigar. Yeah, I've done a V cut with my uh, pocket knife before. Mm-hmm. You know, my pocket knives are sharp. It works really well. I've, I've opened so, them up with my teeth before. It's like yeah. whatever you have whatever to do. Whatever you got, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. Smoke that cigar. That's right. <laughs> uh, well, according to the lunar phase calendar, Ian, we're a few days away. October thirteenth. Uh, there will be an exact half moon in the sky. But for uh, VI cigars, the moon will be full because that is when they will release full moon cigars to retailers. They're releasing full October moon cigars three. at the half moon. At a half moon, exactly. All right. Uh, it's got an eye catching so jack. They were just going for a lunar event, I yeah, think. Uh, they, they, there's nothing wrong is with Is the moon doing anything this month? Okay, good. We'll do it then. Um, <laughs> uh, no, full moon is, uh, is a sort of a. Autumnish uh, brand, if you will. It's got a jack o' lantern image printed on the jet black box, and it's a seasonal smoke that uh, brand owners say they've been releasing around Halloween since 2013. Well, it's mm-hmm. it's it's on its way back. He says he didn't do it every year, uh, but they put one out in 2020, and this year it is coming back. Full Moon will be offered in two blends. Uh, there's regular and Edition Limitada. Which means more expensive, right? <laughs> but uh, but both measure five by fifty eight. They're both made with Nicaraguan binders and fillers. The difference is the wrapper. The regular cigar has a Corojo ninety nine cover leaf, and the Edición Limitada is uh, cloaked in a dark Mexican scent. Now, Edición Limitada, I believe, is Spanish for Mas de Nero. Yes, that's exactly right. I think that's, that's the direct exactly translation. Right. Uh, actually, the full moon is slated to retail for eleven forty two, but the Edición Limitada. Is going to be twelve twenty five. So it's it's a little more. It's not that much more. But it is. I mean, it's as far as I can tell, it's the only Halloween themed cigar I'm I'm aware. Man, of. are we going to get an Oktoberfest from Quesada this year? Oh yeah, I think it's, yeah. Those Oktoberfests are pretty I, darn good. for for a long time before I sort of like jumped into the AJ world with with both feet. 
That was my that was my go to. Well, you know, uh, so we ended up at McCoy's one time during uh, an event that they had with Quesada, and mm-hmm. that's that's when we got turned that on was to his Oktoberfest. And, and remember when they yeah. also used to do that a uh, barrel. For, yeah, for they the used holidays. To do it in a barrel, that yeah. was also really good too. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the uh, the viaje uh, full moon uh, was made in Nicaragua at the Aganorsa Leaf Factory, and it comes in boxes of twenty four. They are going to have uh, special cigars for Thanksgiving and Christmas as well. Nice. So we have that to look forward to. Uh, newest brand from Ashton is the La Aroma de Cuba Passion. It is uh, now shipping. It's entirely Nicaraguan. Uh, the line comes in six sizes, and it features a Cuban seed shade-grown wrapper. The cigars retail for $10 to eleven fifty, and they're made under the watchful eye of the Garcia family. Uh, you know, they, they're the guys from my father's cigars. Just, just <laughs> I mean, there's guys. something about yeah, cigars. No, nobody big. Uh, anyway, and they're the family, of course, behind a lot of different Ashton uh-huh. Products, including San Cristobal. I talked about a San Cristobal right, right. a couple of weeks ago on the show, and it was so good. And several other lines of La Aroma de Cuba. Um, this is now the sixth brand in the La Aroma de Cuba series, and I've had, m- I-, I think, four of them maybe, and they've all just. Been I've had very, at least two of them. Yeah, they're all yeah. good. Yeah. Aroma de Cuba is uh, one uh, of those things that I'll reach for. They are uh, the Passion cigars are a little late to market. Ashton had hoped to have them on sale by August, uh, but they have just started shipping to your favorite tobacconist. Definitely Initial response uh, to the brand has been uh, really strong. So uh, the Core La Aroma de Cuba brand was first made in Honduras when it debuted in 2002, uh, but Ashton moved production to Nicaragua in 2008 and. And it has been there uh, ever since. So uh, these guys always seem to rate high uh, the uh, La Aroma de Cuba mm-hmm. cigars when they're rated in the various magazines and stuff. And I think one of them was uh, uh, maybe more than one of them have appeared on those annual top 25 lists. So uh, good good stuff. I, I got a couple of the Robustos of uh, one of those recently and I just, just enjoyed the heck out of them. So that was a wonderful sound effect there. You I was know. going for the slow motion mm-hmm. open. It was, it was very, very nicely done. This is the Can O Bliss. I don't think we've had an Oscar Blues beer on uh, the show in quite some time. We did have the Oscar Blues Hard Seltzer as a part of our Hard Seltzer Blind Taste Test that we did a couple of months ago, and it wound up being I think everybody's favorite uh, of the day. Do you remember that? That was the blueberry, uh, yes, the, or uh, the wild, wild I, you know, berry. I'm a, I'm a fan, I mean, blackberry. I think I'm a fan of Oscar Blues. Uh, the, some of their beers are so good. First off, Dale's Pale Ale. Yeah, it's a I great. Mean, that pale is ale. fantastic. Yeah. The uh, the um, Old Chub mm-hmm. Old Scottish Chub is Ale is yes. fantastic. Mm-hmm. Their uh, Stout is outstanding. I, I don't know of any of their beers that I don't like. They just do such great beers. This is the first time I've uh, seen a hazy from them. Like I've I said, seen this, maybe out for I've a while. I've seen this but... can, but I haven't tried mm-hmm. it yet. I will tell you, uh, on the nose, it smells delicious. Yeah. It smells like it smells like someone you know spilled beer and orange juice yeah, together. Yeah, I was going to say, did you ever you ever have? Um, I think you can get in a carton. My mom used to get this when I was a kid. Orange pineapple juice, where they basically <laughs> take orange juice and pineapple juice, and and it's all in one. That's what this reminds me of on the nose is orange pineapple juice that I drank when I was a kid. It was- they managed to make um, a hazy IPA that smells nice and floral and fruity mm-hmm. with the uh, with the hops is not so bitter on the end that you can't stand it and still tastes like beer. Yeah, it does taste like beer, doesn't it's it? It's very, very, like, there's a very has thoroughbred a, beer flavor to this that I really like, enjoy. It has a beer-like beer quality to it, <laughs> you know? That sounds like a really silly thing to say, but, man, some of the IPAs we've had are more orange juice-oriented right. than beer-oriented. No, they almost don't feel like you're drinking a beer. No, you're absolutely right. I think this is actually quite delicious. It is... Uh, it says IPA series, so I don't know if that means that it is a limited release or not. But uh, we might have to look on the Oscar Blues website and try to so find out. So this is well-rounded enough. I think even uh, a nice, uh, le- on the lighter side, Connecticut Shade mm-hmm. Cigar would go well with this. I don't think you'd end up getting too much bitter or anything. I think that... Um, the, the bitter that's there, I know it's hops, but it almost is like... You know that um, that pithy stuff around the peel of the orange, right? You know, it's that kind of, of bitter, not a not a not like biting into the peel uh, itself bitter. either. Right, right, exactly. Right, it's good. 
Mm. No, this does not have a pine coney flavor at all. There's mm. not. There's not. It's not even very resinous. It's very no. hoppy, but not resinous. Mouthfeel is. It smells good though. Mouthfeel is not as thick as some hazies, but it's not super thin either. I think that's what I like about it though. I think this has, like I said, it has a much more like beer mm-hmm. thing going on. It doesn't taste like it's trying to be so far outside of beer. I'm going to just pour a little more in my cup under the guise of I wanted to show everyone the color. Yes, yes. Well, you want to make sure. Because that... I want to make sure everybody sees what, <laughs> what color this is. And I'm my uh, volume of, of beer was a little too low for it to show up cleanly uh, on the camera. So now that we know, uh, I think that's quite good, Ian. It's at 7.2%. Too. Yeah. It's bigger and than I expected. It, not only is it 72 but it's our lightest one today. That's when we opened with the IPA. Because <laughs> uh, uh, we're going to take a step Brian up put here. up Cannibalis, either resinous or citra uh, double IPA is what it says. Hmm. Um, so this is a double. That explains why it's, uh, it's a little, bit a bigger, little higher yeah. ABV. Yeah. Uh, 7.2, yes. Amazing. And it says here... Uh, according to the Surgeon General, uh, women should not drink alcoholic beverages during pregnancy because of the risk of birth defects. Consumption of al- alcoholic beverages impairs that's weird your because ability I could to drive swear. or operate machinery. I could swear that's exactly what it said on the last beer that we had on the show. I think it might have. Ooh. This are, they, may be a, are they from the same place? This may be a job for the X-Files. <laughs> <laughs> In 2011, Quesada Cigars introduced a new line of cigars that were designed to pair with Marzen-style beer, mm-hmm. which is what Oktoberfest beers are. Yes. Um, the German beer that is traditionally served during October holiday now. Uh, now the line is... Uh, wait, wait, guys. You lose, I, I uh, lost part. Oh wait, there it just yeah. it just expanded way further. Now the line is celebrating its tenth anniversary with a trio of violettas available for 2021. The Quesada Oktoberfest tenth anniversary uses a San Andreas, a Mexican San Andreas wrapper, over Dominican binder, Dominican fillers. It will be offered in three uh, long-standing sizes for the Oktoberfest line. This is from uh, Thank You uh, On Stark. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, the Oktoberfest, while some of them. Some of the years have been among my favorite cigars ever. Uh, the 2016. They, they have not been as good every year. In fact, there were a couple of years that it's not. They weren't bad. Cigars. Yeah, they weren't bad cigars. The white they label just, ones. The were, white label were ones not are just not as good, good as the blue, blue label ones. The blue label ones from uh, a little bit earlier in the series. 16 and 17. Yeah. The, those just absolutely rock. So I'm real curious to see. With the San Andreas wrapper, they may be headed back also, in the direction. Also, remember that... they had the weird size that looked like a little club, like you'd meet somebody. With it? <laughs> yes, I loved that size. Yes. That was awesome. Yeah, that was what was it, was I it don't called what they the called the it. Billy or did it they was, call it? Yeah, Billy it had, Billy it had some kind of name. I love yeah. that size though. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, uh, I remember taking a handful of those to uh, Renaissance Festival and, and smoking those. Oh, see what those. a perfect yeah. Ren Fair yes, cigar yes. that would be. Yeah, just absolutely it was perfect. Great. Well. Uh, yeah, I I am looking forward to the to that. I will definitely be tasting it. I I try to buy them every year if the, if they come out. They also haven't released an Oktoberfest every single year. They've skipped a year or two in there. Yeah. So it's always a always a thing for me when they come out. Thanks, now. 2020. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. 2020, man. What a what a dumpster fire of a year that was. <laughs> 2020, you suck. <laughs> it's uh, uh, all the other years are going to be pointing at it and laughing. We made through 2020 though. We did. Yeah. We yeah, made it happen. We did. Uh, amazingly so. I don't know how we also, did it. Also, I, I noticed you're here. You're in one piece. You survived mm-hmm. Facebook being down for a few hours. Oh the my other day. god. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, I I honestly do not use Facebook much at all anymore except for for the show for putting the show up and in fact my wife had to tell me hey a bunch of people have wished you happy birthday on facebook (laughs) i said tell them all i said thank you i just haven't gone on you know since it got so political uh, i just i just didn't have much appetite i I ignore a lot of uh, facebook posts but i do enjoy facebook for the uh for that i get to you know reach out to some people make Mm -hmm. a little comment once in a while and and that that's what i always enjoyed about it you know know? i connected with people from you know that i haven't seen since high school you know Mm -hmm. it's cool to find out you know steve richardson is listening to the show steve and i were like best buddies in high school that is but 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 we've lost touch over the years you know uh he's a good dude steve he's uh very funny guy. Good artist, too. Um, all right. I am going to say that I recommend the Cano Bliss highly to my IPA friends out there, and you know who you are. Um, it, this this one is definitely uh, definitely worth it. Uh, I'll be buying that regularly. Okay, so Brian's, uh, Wiki Brian's statement makes sense. He said uh, either resinous or citrus, double IPA, and then he also put or hazy or citrus. Uh, he said there are apparently four... Uh, varieties of the Cano Bliss. Okay, so the Cano so Bliss IPA one is, series... 
This one is, is the, the Hazy India Pale hazy Ale. Hazy IPA. Okay, so. In- interesting. All right. Well, I like it. I applaud what you're doing, Oscar That's Blues. That's pretty good. And we should go to Austin and check those boys out. Yeah, buddy. Road trip, brother. All right, let's take a break. We'll be right back. We have much more to do on the show today, including uh, tasting some rum and tasting a little smashed pumpkin from nice. Shipyard Ale. So Give me the next beer. I want to put them on tour again. I will hand it to you right now. Percussive. I like that. <laughs> Welcome back. It's Smoking and Toasting. This is the radio program, podcast, and video extravaganza that is all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand rolled cigars. We are brought to you by mycigarshirts.com. Uh, do check them out. There's, I understand, a line of uh, sweatshirts coming out at mycigarshirts.com. So it's uh, almost that weather. Sweaty. Almost that weather. Um, while Ian is pouring the smashed pumpkin, I wanted to uh, tell you uh, you may have seen this story already, but uh, Ooh, this... we haven't. I have not talked about it on the show. This smells like, you know, when you, uh, oh. when you open the can of pumpkin spice to make yes, the pumpkin pie? Yes, yes, totally. <laughs> this, like, immediately hit the air. And that spice will work on anything. My mom used to, when I was a kid, she used to make pumpkin pies all the time, but they were, weren't, there was no pumpkin in them at all. It was sweet potato. Uh, but she would put the right spices in it. It tasted exactly like nice. pumpkin pie. Have you ever yeah. had pumpkin soup? Yes, it's, it's really good. good. Yeah. It's really good, and I'm not a big soup guy, but pumpkin soup. Yeah, that's really it, good because it's all the spices in there. Again, mm-hmm. it's 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 where it comes from. So, um, you know, hip hop artists have had a uh, a big his- history with cigars. A lot of hip hop artists like to smoke cigars. Uh, many of them uh, smoke them in their videos. Uh, but now, Nas, the hip hop artist, is getting his sleeves rolled up and getting ready to get involved in cigars. He has teamed up with. Um, Escobar Cigars to release his first um, first big cigar. I mean, he's a Grammy Award winner, uh, well-known and respected rapper, and they are doing an Escobar Nas lineup consisting of two all Nicaraguan lines, Maduro and Natural, and uh, you can look for those. They're uh, Escobar cigars, but look for them with uh, Nas's little you know name on the nice. on the box. So yeah, so kind of cool to see. Uh, you know, people from the rap world getting involved in in cigar production. Well, you know, uh, Jay Z always smoked the Zenos because they had the, That's right, the, I remember the that. silver band and with man, the when, Z on when it. When he did that, Zenos went through the roof. Yeah, you yeah. remember? Because I used to buy Zenos as a not so expensive, you know, uh, uh, easy to smoke while you're uh, walking the dog yep, type yep. of cigar, and then all of a sudden the ones with those silver uh, bands on them were all like fifteen and twenty dollars, yeah, and they like, went up pretty fast, uh, and they uh, and they did uh, quite well. So um, I, I've mentioned that I've been to Shipyard um, uh, Brewery. In fact, I, I've only been there once, but I do remember that I enjoyed their product so much that I had to have somebody else drive me home. Like that was, <laughs> It was that kind of a day, right? Uh, they're, they're just a great brewery. And people in Maine take their beer very, very seriously, their craft beer. And Shipyard is one of the best. They're not the only great brewery in Maine, but they're one of the best, I think. And they're very we, well known for their, for their pumpkin ales. We've had, uh, the ones that I've had, we've had on the show, and they, they've had some great products. Smash Pumpkin Season... With Shipyard Smash Pumpkin, this big-bodied beer pours a, a light copper orange with pleasing aromas of pumpkin, cinnamon, and burnt sugar. Uh, mm, balanced burnt by sugar mild for lingering, sure. yes, ba- balanced by mild lingering sweetness and slightly warm bitter finish. Smash Pumpkin is perfect beer for when the temperatures start to drop. Yes, it's gotten like last night. I think it was in the upper 60s, which for us is cold. Yeah, I mean, I was <laughs> put on a jacket. Um, uh, for when the temperature starts to drop to enjoy fully uh, all the flavors, the sale is best drunk at 55 degrees Fahrenheit, which means we should actually let it warm up just a little bit yeah, from where it is now. Probably the flavors cold. will expand a little bit. And they will, I'm sure. Like right do. now, I, there's a there's a nice bitterness to the finish on this um, and a little it's astringency a pump, it's a to it. It's a pumpkin bitter, though. Again, yeah. not a hot bitter. It's a pumpkin bitter. And you know what? Uh, Shipyard also has... And I'm blanking on the name of it, but it's it's the pumpkin ale with the headless horseman with the right, pumpkin head. That was one yeah, of the best. Is ones it pumpkinator? No, pumpkinator. No, pumpkinator. Saint Arnold's. That and was, that's good um, too. By the way, 
I thought it was ghost something or something ghost. Or... Uh, ha- we'll have to look it up. I, yeah, I have to look it up. If only we had people who listened to the show that looked things up for us. That and would be kept us Kept us from saying wrong stuff all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or correcting us when we do. I don't mind yeah. saying wrong stuff. Uh, I want to point out, um, I want to try this a little warmer. It's uh, it's it's nice. It's the, the flavors are interesting, but I can feel like, I feel like the... Uh, the the flavors are being constricted a little bit. It says smashed overall. pumpkin season with shipyard smashed pumpkin. Uh, and you talked about a little of this, but um, uh, it pours a light copper orange with aromas of pumpkin, cinnamon, and burnt sugar. And I am definitely picking up the burnt yeah, sugar. Yeah, the burnt sugar. In fact, that's one of my favorite that's things part of the about bitter. This. That's part of the yeah. bitter on the end. Like the, uh, you can taste that it's that it's the hops, but that, that burnt sugar has that bitterness, too. That and almost it reminds me of uh, what's the dessert where you... Take creme the brulee. Into, yeah, reminds mm. me of that taste, that creme brulee yeah, crust yeah, when you, taste. This is this is pretty nice, even uh, yeah. even at this. So I want I'm gonna uh, actually pour myself a little extra here, and I'm gonna let it sit here and get a little warmer. We're right, gonna so, come back to this later. Yeah, in the so show. We'll, we'll come back to that in the next segment. Also, by the way, nine percent. Yeah, I was just, and you can you can get just a little hint of that booziness from it too. Um, I'll just mention that you know pumpkin beer is not. My favorite thing, like I, I could burn out on it really fast, yeah, yeah. but this has me like almost like excited that we're moving into that season where all the seasonal this, pumpkins. This I, has, I'm ready for a pumpkinator from Saint Arnold. This Arnold's has and a pumpkin few flavor, but it's a brighter pumpkin flavor. It doesn't mm-hmm. it doesn't leave with such a dark, um, uh, cloying sweetness either. Right, right, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't taste like it has seeds in it. You know, some of them, some of them taste so pumpkiny. You're expecting pumpkin seeds, like from the man from fresh the in- fresh roasted pumpkin. Oh, seeds. I love them roasted. Oh. No, don't get me wrong. That's oh, so that's good. great stuff. Roasted, so and salted. Tell me about it. That's good stuff. Uh, any we get no answers. Brian said sorry, wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. All right, let's take a break. We'll uh, we'll let these warm up a little and try them uh, uh, again in the next segment. Uh, plus, on the way, we have we still have you know, still have drinking news to get to, and uh, once again, our drinking news teaser headline for show number two fifty four is. Um, <clears throat> Do we need teaser music? Yeah, that's why I was stalling. I was... That's not how I remember learning the alphabet. We'll be right back at smoking and toasting. Welcome back. It's Smoking and Toastin'. We are the program that's all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars. We are brought to you by MyCigarShirts.com. Great shirts online for cigar lovers and the people who love them. MyCigarShirts.com because... Cigars. Thank you, sir. So a testament to how good this smashed pumpkin is, is that you and I both in the last segment poured ourselves a little and said we want to wait and let it you know warm up and, and and try it a little bit once it reaches a little closer to room temperature and and i keep, i keep drinking mine <laughs> i keep going oh just just a what little sip thinking? and then i go oh okay no i need to let it warm up so uh anyway we'll we'll get back to it here in uh, just a moment uh we're going to taste some rum in this segment you may see it on mr twirly gig right now this is the clement rum from martinique and uh, so we're looking forward to that um rum seems like a great spirit for the fall don't you think i mean we're we're all about fall now because we've had a little pumpkin and we're uh, you know we're feeling rums, the temperatures rums not being got a little quite spicy so and especially has a lot of times a lot of the very uh, baking spice kind of thing right going which on seems to it. seems sort seems of autumnish in, yeah. yeah seems sort of autumnish well uh, I'm looking forward to tasting that and of course we still have our imperial porter to taste so we'll be looking forward to that in the final segment uh, as well so Thrillist, uh, I mentioned before uh, that this uh, list is from Thrillist that we're going to go down of the 34 hottest breweries in America right now. And, right now. And, but Thrillist, despite the overuse of the phrase right now, uh, Thrillist is really a pretty reputable uh, online yeah. uh, source. We've we've been pretty pleased with their lists. In they the do past. they do fun stuff. Their their lists yeah, are they pretty, do and and they seem to do their uh, they seem to do their uh, research pretty well. They say that the 34 breweries on this list range from old school favorites making new waves oh. to up and comers offering destination worthy pours. And I love that because if you're going to travel, 
why not throw in a little uh, brewery brewery stop on your way? Oh yeah. It's like when I w- when I went to uh, New Mexico earlier in the year, uh, we stopped at Santa Fe uh, Craft Brewing Company. Mm. Oh, oh, beer was so good we had there. Something ab- there is something about, and this is particularly true for me being an IPA fan. But I'm guessing you would you would speak to this from from other styles as well. Uh, there's something about beer right there from the brewery that's so fresh that it's just come out if, of the tap if from you're one of those drinking uh pale ales lagers, oh yeah um ipas mm-hmm. things that really should be fresh when you're drinking right. them man There's nothing quite there, like it, it, it right? is it is it's the difference between getting frozen vegetables and fresh vegetables i remember i it's, was it's big i was at brash uh brewing company um a couple of years ago Went there to watch a band called Mr. Plow. Go, Mr. Plow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, they had a watermelon goza that was right off the tap that was sensational. Yeah. yeah. Like, in fact, I've gone back to plenty of gozas in a can since then, trying to like recapture trying that. To recapture and, the greatness. And they're good, but it's not quite the yeah. same. You know what I mean? So there's something about certain styles of beer right out of that tap. Mm-hmm. I, I think Marzen's are the same way, right? Marzins one, are so good. Oh, just right out of the tap. There's nice nothing fresh, like it. Yes. Uh, Oktoberfest is coming, my friend. So uh, we'll look forward to that. All right, let's go down. These are listed alphabetically so as not to imply favoritism to one over the other. So in no particular 34. order except for yep, alphabetical. Except for alphabetical. Uh, from Monterey, California, uh, the first one is Alvarado uh, Street. And I'm not familiar with this. Don't they know say. It. In an alternate reality, John Steinbeck would have been uh, having beers with Madeline Martha McKenzie at Alvarado Street Brewery. Um, it's you know there's a lot of a lot of text here. I'm not going to read it all for 34 uh, 34 breweries, but make note of this, California people. Uh, Monterey, California, is just one of the most wonderful towns in the United States, anyway. Um, and I wish I had gone to Alvarado Street. Uh, the craft brewery the last time I was there because my wife and I stayed there on our uh, honeymoon. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Stayed there overnight. So, uh, from Denver, Colorado, Beerstadt Lagerhaus uh, is a is a place. Where, I'm just going to skip the text on these and just give you the yeah, just give you the just, title, unless there's one particular because there's 34 of them. Yeah, uh, from Portland, Maine, and we have shipyard from Portland, Maine, but this one is Bissell Brothers, okay. which I always thought... I haven't heard of that. I always thought they made vacuum yeah, cleaners, right? but apparently <laughs> uh, apparently they're a pretty good brewery, too. Man, their vacuums uh, suck. From Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I was in Albuquerque. I went to the uh, Santa Fe Brewing Company, but they are talking about Boxing Bear Brewing Company in mm, Albuquerque. Don't know that one. So i got to go back. Now, my wife has a good friend who lives there. I'm sure I'll be back this time. Uh, yeah, I'll go to Boxing Bear. Yeah, because you were there recently, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, earlier this year. So, uh, From Grand Rapids, Michigan, City Built uh, brewing company, lot of great breweries in Michigan. But are Michigan's you familiar? Killing it with beers. Are you no, familiar at all with City Built? Yeah, all right. Uh, I have heard of this one, Cloudburst Brewing from Seattle, Washington. I think I've had one of their IPAs, uh, but I'm not remembering it now. I don't think we've done it on the show. Uh, Cloudburst is uh, uh, was formed by Steve Luke, who was a brewer at Elysian Brewing. Okay, and Elysian, as you know. Their Space Dust IPA, a right. big, uh, big favorite. Uh, they were acquired by Anheuser Busch, just yeah. like Carbach was here in Houston and a number of others, and Wicked Weed, among others. And uh, so I think Steve uh, took that time to go and start Cloudburst Brewing. That's pretty good, by the way. When you get the when you get the big uh, alcohol the big companies payout, to buy yeah. you out, and you just go and start a new one. <laughs> I love that. Now I have the money to start a new place. From Chicago, Illinois, Dovetail Brewing Company. Uh, I have uh, I've heard of those those guys, but I'm not I'm not I don't think I've had a Dovetail uh, beer. Uh, so so far we haven't had beers from any mm-hmm. of these, have we? Uh, I know I think I have had. You I did have something from Cloudburst. Cloudburst. Yeah. Right, right. I did have something from Cloudburst, but it's been a while. Uh, from uh, Batavia, Illinois, Energy City Brewing. Not familiar well, with them at all, are you? Well. So this is why I love lists like this, because now I have, have I'm going to be on the lookout for these and, and uh, looking for their beers. And they're all over the place, so that's, you know, The next one's from you Charleston, drive. South Carolina, Edmonds Oast, O-A-S-T. Do you know what Oast means? No, but I feel like uh, I, th- I feel like maybe my nephew was in that area and sent me a picture of uh, something. He was it's what's so like great about craft beer right now because there's so many yeah. breweries that yeah. it's just like this world of discovery. It's sort of kid in a candy shop almost. Well, we've gotten know? back to a little bit of like so, you know, back 
back many years ago before everything just got completely over homogenized to the, to uh to the point where every five miles you end up with the same strip center that has a Chili's <laughs> and, and a, a yeah, Red Robin and, a, and yeah. a Red Robin and an Applebee's and all that stuff right I used to be able to go places and find like great little diners or great uh -huh. little places like that great little I think wall. now we're getting back to a little bit of that same kind of thing where now you go someplace you go hey what's the local brewery right. what's something the local authentic. flavor right, yeah, something authentic right real. absolutely absolutely that whenever I'm in another city even if I'm at a restaurant I'll ask do you have any local beers on yeah, tap yeah absolutely, you know? absolutely. Uh, because that's what I want to try it's something i wouldn't have mm -hmm. wouldn't have gotten elsewhere i uh, you know i love a good sam adams but i can and, get that anywhere. and what's cool about that too is you can do that region to region like you don't have to be four states over no like when i go to uh, new braunfels there's new braunfels breweries that don't right. have any distribution here that i get to try those on local places we're there's three san hours antonio from austin places. and, and austin three breweries. hours from yeah. san antonio yeah exactly so that's uh, that, that's a good thing i want to encourage you by the way to go back to your slightly warm warmer oh uh, yeah it feels about right mm-hmm There it is. Mm -hmm. That needed to be a little warmer. Well, I, I'm just such a cold beer lover that I had no problem with it mm. at the other temperature. But there so, is there is a little bit of an expansion of flavor now. Oast, a kill you, uh, a kill news for drying hops. Yes, there's a big expansion of flavor. Well, that's what an oast is. So, um, uh, so when I go drink beers with. Um, Alan Denny. I always enjoy <laughs> drinking beers with him because, first off, we like some ridiculous beers, like crazy flavored stouts, things like so that. It's so good to see him at the comedy thing. It I was. Seen him absolute in a while. blast. But one of the things I love about hanging out with him is he is just fine with the fact that we can pour a stout. And then not drink it for 15 minutes well, see, while it warms up to the right temperature. You guys have so much more patience than me. That's the <laughs> oh, I thing. Didn't, I didn't say we weren't drinking something else. Oh, in the okay, meantime. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, <laughs> but it's you know like like it's fun to taste it when it's cold and go. Hmm, let's see what it tastes like when it warms up a little bit. It's uh, it's a good time. From Morganton and Nebo, North Carolina, Fanta Flora Brewery. Mm. Hmm, interesting. I've not heard of those guys. Have you? I haven't heard of. It. Now this one I've know of. In fact, I've had beers from these guys. Great Notion Brewing Company in Portland, Oregon. I don't think I've had that. Uh, they have got a uh, a really spec. Well, I think it may have been a seasonal that I had from them, but it was a spectacular IPA. Great Notion Brewing, really, really good. Green Bench Brewing in St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, they. Uh, already do the Sunshine IPA, which was a uh, big hit from uh, the time it was released in 2013. Uh, but they now have got uh, just all kinds of stuff coming out. They've got their own cellar room and a Peach Alice Sour uh, that apparently is making a lot of noise these days. I was, I I was trying to pull oh, the cork yeah, on this. this. One is a, yeah, you're right. This is a corkless bottle. Uh, it, that didn't give us quite the same sound effect for... Uh, for being able to turn those things over, Grim Artisanal Ales out of Brooklyn, New York. You you've heard of Grim? I feel like we've yeah. tried a Grim mm -hmm. on the show Believe before. We have. Halfway Crooks out of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, the ears of hip hop heads uh, should immediately perk up at the mention of this name. But Halfway Crooks is more than just a classic uh, reference to Mob Deep. Uh, it is apparently a. a, a a beer company that is really kind of turning Atlanta on its ear, uh, nice. brew, brew wise. So, uh, be sure to check that out if you are in the Georgia uh, area, in the Atlanta area. Holmes Brewery, not Holmes, but Holmes, H O M E S Brewery in Ann, Ann Arbor, Michigan. I have had beers from Hudson Valley Brewing out of Beacon, New York. Uh, I think a very reputable brewery. But remember, these are beer, breweries that are either new and really kind of coming on, making right, a name for right. them, or they're maybe older breweries that are reinventing themselves, making a lot of noise with, with new products and the new things that they're doing. Now, I have never heard of Monday Night Brewing. Have you? Mm -mm. They apparently are located in Atlanta, Georgia, Birmingham, Alabama, and Nashville, Tennessee. Monday Night I'm gonna keep. Uh, Monday night. I'm gonna keep looking out for Birmingham. Those guys. They love the governor. <laughs> That's so I've heard. So <laughs> I've heard. By the way, Ian came to pick me up at, at my house today. Uh, we went to Casa and had a cigar before we came in to do the show, and uh, I was without my car today. So Ian came and picked me up, and uh, uh, he texted me that he was, uh, uh, you know, almost there, and I texted back that I was running a minute late. I'd be down shortly, <laughs> and he texted me one line. He said, "I'm not waiting on a lady." 
And the Rolling Stones reference was so brilliant. <laughs> I just got to give you huge kudos for that. I'm just waiting on a friend. I'm just waiting on a friend. Uh, Ian, we're actually going to try a beer from this next brewery today. Phase 3 Brewing out of Lake Zurich, Illinois. We'll be trying their uh, Imperial Porter nice. here in just a little bit. Uh, but they are listed on this list of 34. Revision Brewing from Sparks, Nevada. We've had uh, revision beers on the show before, so that's a good one. Because I've never heard of Rip Beer. R-I-I-P. Mm -hmm. Rip Beer. Out of Huntington Beach, uh, California. Uh, are you familiar with Schilling Beer Company out of Littleton, New Hampshire? I don't know any of these, really. Well, you know some of these. Spaceway Brewing out of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Uh, Side Project Brewing out of Side St. Louis. Side Project, We've definitely. had some great yeah, yeah. beers from those guys. They have a lot of those big bomber specialty type things. Man, if you're opening Project. a brewery in St. Louis, you got an uphill battle there mm. against the... But Coors there's, and but there's uh, yeah, but that's where the big Budweiser plant is. But you Budweiser, know what? Yeah. There's some great craft breweries in that area. There yeah. really are. Uh, so hey, the real brewers got to go somewhere. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mention side project. There's speciation artisan ales. It's S P E C I A T I O N. I speciation. Right, speciation. Uh, if you're a fan of wild. Fruited, spontaneously fermented, or sour beers. You may know uh, Denver's Black Project, which I have heard of. Uh, but they say one of its earliest employees, uh, Mitch Erminger, uh, now has his own non-Denver brewery in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where he's turning out beers in the same vein to similarly rave reviews. Speciation. Michigan's just crushing names. it with beers. They really are. Uh, the Oregon area, uh, you know, uh, Oregon, Washington State, that area has always mm -hmm. been rich for craft brewing. And the next one, Steeplejack Beer, is from Portland. I feel like we've talked about that one before. I don't know if we've had their beer, but I think they've, they've come up on a list or they're, something. They're a beer a brewery that's in a 110-year-old former church. Nice. It has the Steeplejack. It has the, it has the steeple, so that's where they're from. Uh, out of Hudson, New York, the Suarez Family Brewery uh, is mentioned here. Hudson Valley, uh, New York area, has been a pretty big hotbed for mm -hmm. uh, uh, for great craft beer. Out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Third Space Brewing. From Exeter, Rhode Island, Tilted Barn Brewery. From uh, Charlton, Din De Charlton Deerfier Deerfield, sorry, I can't speak today. Charlton Deerfield and Sandwich, Massachusetts, is Treehouse Brewing. We have had some Treehouse, Treehouse yeah. beers uh, on the show. From Doral, Florida, Tripping Animals. From Wanucky, Wisconsin, Untitled Art. And yes, those oh, guys yeah. are making some noise for sure. We've had their stuff. Uh, Roswell, Georgia has the Variant Brewing Company. And uh, Weymouth, Massachusetts, the Vitamin C Brewing Company. Vitamin <laughs> S-E-A. Love... Vitamin C uh, love that Brewing name. Company. Uh, and then Greeley, Colorado for Weldworks Brewery. We've had some great yeah, had beers Weldworks. Uh, from Weldworks. And that is the end of the list. Ian, what's wrong with this list? Um, it seems like they're very uh, north of us centric. Yes, very I think, much what's so. What's the what's the most southern state they had in there? Was I uh, think they had North one. South Carolina. They had they had one Florida and one Florida. One Florida. Yeah, not a single Texas brewery. There is so much crazy innovation going on at All Texas over breweries Texas. right now. And and all over it, you know. There's I'd some love great to say, stuff happening in I'd Oklahoma, love to say Houston, but it's literally all over. All it really over is Texas. Houston, there's great stuff happening in San Antonio, San Antonio, yeah, and Braunfels really. area, and the, and the uh, Dallas area. Even Dallas though I still area. feel like Houston's got a little bit of a leg up when it comes it to craft brewing. It was all just a dream. There's there's some great stuff. Martin House, are you kidding Martin me? House killing Martin House doesn't make the so, list. <laughs> uh, Martin House. I went to uh, me and my wife happened to be up in the area. This was three or four years ago and she goes hey there's a brewery not too far from here let's go there and we went to martin house brewery and they had uh just a very i think they had four beers in their line at that point in time maybe it was they had the uh, uh 3 a.m more than 4 a.m yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, they, had breakfast the, um, great. they had the uh oklahoma sucks <laughs> yes uh, i remember that beer yes. right they had uh box lighter i think no it wasn't box lighter that's uh was that that's not Martin House, is it? I don't that's, think so. That's a different. No, they had one something like that, but um, they they only had like four beers in their core line. The place was obviously you know not um, not pumping out huge amounts of beer. It was right. really good. We enjoyed ourselves. We hung out there, and um, and I think there was even a weirdness where we couldn't buy the beer at the uh, at the uh, brewery. We had to go to the uh, 
a place around a corner and buy a beer. Really? That's yeah. kind of strange. That might be another another brewery. Of the, I get that one and another one confused because they were very similar. But uh, anyway, uh, and it's just fun to see Martin Houses come into their own. They're making some of the craziest beers. They're kind of like um, Ingenious is doing. Yes. Here in Houston, Ingenious is crazy. Absolutely. Or if you're familiar with Urban South, where they just Urban do some, South of the, is some of the craziest mm-hmm. beers you can imagine. And Martin House is, is becoming a powerhouse in that I'd say that style of beer, but it's it's kind of a genre more than a mm-hmm. style. It's, right. It's uh, it's like a whole like let's just make crazy stuff. I had yeah. one the other night uh, that a friend of mine had that was basically a smoothie. It tasted way more smoothie than beer, and it was delicious. Mm-hmm. But it tasted like if you've ever gone to um, Smoothie King and had yep. their angel yeah. food. <laughs> yes, yes, that's yes. what it tasted like. Oh, wow, that was my great. first impression. That is so great. Except for Smoothie King, just won't put liquor in it. Yeah, right, but you could always get Smoothie King and add liquor. <laughs> yeah, there's if you that. Want to. Adam, did I pass you? Speaking of liquor, did I pass you a rum? Okay, good. So this is the Clement uh, rum. It is. I'm going to make sure I I, I get this right because it's um, it, it's a very interesting uh, description for this Clement Select Barrel French Caribbean Rum from Martinique, and uh, as you can tell, Ian has begun his research. Um, this tastes, and I mean this in sort of a good way. <laughs> this tastes like a rubber tree fell into a mineral bath. Very interesting. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I'm giving it a moment and then someone because added some like sweetness to it. So that that rubbery funk, which is yeah. common for so many and that's rums. A good thing. And it's a good thing, right. It comes very late to the palate. Yeah. Uh, it's not up front at all. In fact, up front this is almost more like sipping a whiskey. Up front, I get is mineral water. Like mm-hmm. it is so like the minerality in this is so high. I feel like I need to uh like pounded into some wood. It's like it's like So this is so interesting tastes because like nails. At, at first you get a sort of a whiskey vibe from it. And then the retro hail is very much like a like a bourbon. The but, retro hail, I agree with that. But then here comes that that rubbery funk that says, No, 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 I'm a rum and it comes very late in It's bizarre. To the it doesn't palate. taste like rum until the aftertaste. R- that's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. So weird. It really feels and tastes more like a whiskey until that rubbery funk uh finish hits you like really like I'm gonna say I'm like three or four seconds after the fact. It's very strange. Yeah, it's really different from any rum. And maybe that's just because it's from Martinique. I don't know. Uh, what does it tell us? Uh, it's a small batch of handcrafted rums. Uh, Clement Select Barrels, a small batch of handcrafted rums rested in charred French oak barrels. Especially, that's probably why I have that, that astringent oak right, thing right, on the back. Right, because of the French right, oak right, barrels. Um, sure, sure. Especially selected for a cellar master the, for their uh, unique quality and character. These barrels have been conditioned to soften the rum with brilliant notes of vanilla, cocoa butter, uh, leading to a remarkably smooth finish. So, um, so I don't know if I'm getting the vanilla, to be honest with you. And I, I love I, vanilla I, I and notes feel, and rum. I feel a little of the cocoa butter in there. I don't know if soften is the right word because this does not crumb across as soft. No. As a matter of especially fact, especially not for a rum. It's so astringent. Like that after I've taken a sip and wait for a little while, it's almost distracting. I, I, I totally understand what you're saying and I agree. Um, it's 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 just got more of a an astringent bite to it than you're expecting. You know, I was saying this to you uh, about something else earlier today, that there are some rums that, uh, well, we were talking about barrel rum. Right. I like it very much, but I don't drink it as often because it hits the palate so much more like a whiskey than a rum that usually if I'm in the mood for that, I drink whiskey. I have some of that barrel rum, and I enjoy it once in a while. It's great. Don't get me wrong. It's wonderful. But... Usually when I'm in the mood for rum, I'm looking for more of that vanilla, that that maple, that, that more uh, rum flavor. That more, yeah, right, yeah. rum flavor. And and a little bit of the rubbery funk is wonderful. And you know, we've had some of the uh, plantation products from Docs that have that have been really heavy-handed with heavy the rubbery funk, funk. Yeah. and they've been delicious. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that this isn't, but it it kind of goes against my expectations for what I'm expecting. I'm trying to, to decide if I don't really like this, or 
if it's just so different then I'm having a little bit of a knee jerk reaction because mm -hmm. I hate to I hate to I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to keep sipping it and see so this is interesting oh now I've spilled two drinks now in one. you just pulled it boom, in boom boom I just pulled it in uh no it's interesting because it makes me think of and I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head but it's the product that you know remember when Jonathan Drew from Drew Estate got into the spirit business yes and he has I think it's called Brixton Mash it's a it's a rum whiskey hybrid uh, I think I like that better than I like this which comes across almost like a, a whiskey-ish rum yeah I, I there's something in that flavor profile in here that I'm not entirely sure that I like it's but then I this. usually like like if you put this down on paper what is actually like what mm -hmm. I'm tasting if I was gonna go ahead and say okay so I get First off, mineral water, like hard Big mineral time, water. Especially on the front. Yeah, hard mineral water. Um, and then there's there's a sweetness going on, but it's a little bit... You know what? I, I think I just nailed it. That sweetness tastes a little like artificial sweetener to me oh. in this. I think that's what it's doing. It has that, that saccharine almost mm -hmm. kind of... I don't Which know you're how not to expecting it from that. something that's made from sugar cane. <laughs> right, right, and right. I'm sure that that's not in here. Uh, I mean, I doubt it would, they would put it in there. I can't be actually sure. But the bottom line is, I, I think that this on paper, outside, if you take that that what I just set out, and you say, okay, so you've got minerally water. I love that. You've got a very dry finish. I love that. You've mm -hmm. got some rum funk in there. I love that. Uh, and then there's that little cocoa butter. I, I definitely get some of that, and that's nice. But I don't like the way it comes together in this particular so, rum. let me ask you this. If I had handed this to you and not said it's a rum, if I just said, hey, taste this new spirit I got, and not told you what it was, would that change how your palate perceives this? See, that's what I was trying to avoid is just having a knee-jerk reaction of this is not what I expected, so I don't like it. Because right. we all do that to some degree. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's no, like no question. It's like if you like Sprite and you like Coke, but you're expecting Coke and you take a sip of Sprite, it's weird at first, right? Uh -huh. So that's I'm trying to get past that. But I think, honestly, I don't think that's it. I think that this combination of flavors, the way this came together, I just don't think I like this. It's not my favorite rum, I will tell you that. It's it's an enjoyable experience, but again, when I go rum, the things I'm looking for are not necessarily what this delivers. That said, I love when that funk kind of comes in like three, four seconds after you've swallowed the your, funk, your Like I rum. said, all the parts of it are kind of nice. It just doesn't come together well. And then they say it has a remarkable smooth finish. Smooth is one of those. Yeah, I wouldn't I'm starting say to learn smooth that that's at all. A, uh, that's that ca as a catchphrase, it's not a very good one. We, we started making fun of that recently. And right. A particularly smooth rum. I just, I, I don't think it's a smooth thing. I think it's sweet. It's got a lot of things. It's interesting. I don't think it would make a mixed drink very well. I think it would no. make it oh, harsh. Oh, I think it'd, it'd make it harsh. Yeah, absolutely. It would make it harsh. And then the the dryness on that oak finish, which I generally love in whiskey, but there's not enough sweetness in here to um, to smooth that out. And I think what happens is that dryness becomes distracting. Like right now, yes. my I want something else to drink right. because it's and so I, astringent I do too, in my except palate. I spilled my beer, so I'm going to have to. Uh, um, use Mr. Cruz, <laughs> I'm going to fix this for you. Okay, you are fact, You need this one. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You can you can take me you back. You need to there. eradicate that flavor out of your mouth. Okay, so Ian, we have two very important things that need to happen in the next segment. Uh, Liliana Rodriguez, our tequila expert, has sent us a tequila report, which we will be sharing in the next segment. Uh, well, three things, because we need to taste this Imperial Porter. And then the last one, of course, is drinking news. Drinking news on its way. And we will be back with it in just a moment. You are listening to, and I hope viewing, Smoking and Toasting. <laughs> Welcome back. It is Smoking and Toasting. This is the radio program uh, podcast and video extravaganza that is all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand-rolled cigars. We've talked about all of these things today. 
That was an interestingly chosen sound effect. <laughs> I love the randomness of it sometimes. It's just, uh, you know. Yeah, sometimes yeah. I just go for something. And here's the sound effect. Um, <laughs> so uh, so welcome back to the show. We're brought to you by MyCigarShirts.com. T-shirts on the web for cigar lovers and, and sweatshirts and other goodies, too. Uh, MyCigarShirts.com because cigars. cigars. Yes. This, uh, this sound machine that we have here, it's mm-hmm. called the sound machine. Um, it's missing a few key sounds that we really need we need um we need the sound of someone sneaking or creaky floorboards oh yeah that'd be good that would be pretty that'd awesome be a squelching shoe maybe we should take it to miami then it would be the miami turn a beat around <laughs> didn't we didn't we reference gloria estefan like I in the last did. show <laughs> wow that is that is beyond random um well but degrees you know what? seven degrees right i have met her she is a wonderfully nice lady she's very cool awesome uh okay let's uh let's uh, jump right into drinking news shall we you want to give us the uh the drinking news theme music performed on the ukulele live by the way i just want to point out there's not a lot of other podcasts you could enjoy where they would bring you theme songs live. 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 We, we like to be authentic. I, occasionally we do a recorded version, but... Well, yeah. You know, I'm here all about the drinking news, drinking news. Now it's time for drinking news, drinking news, drinking news. Now it's time for drinking news. A Florida man with one arm said he had a gator for a pet. When asked about his absent arm, he said, uh, I had to take my gator to the vet. Drinking news, drinking news. Now it's time for drinking news. Cheers, y'all. Today's drinking news story gives us a bit of a puzzle, and one which perhaps you can contemplate easier if you have been drinking. If it's a puzzle, do we need mysterious music? Do uh, you have some mysterious music I for us? I can come up with some. Yeah. Thought you were playing Stairway to Heaven for a minute. There. Oh, good. <laughs> you haven't lived till you've heard Stairway to Heaven on the ukulele, <laughs> just so you know. Uh, no, today's drinking news, honestly, is one of those that I think you will enjoy much more if you're able to see the picture. So if you're listening to the audio version only of the show, we encourage you to go to um, uh, YouTube uh, at some point and look at the illustration that we provide for this because it will it will really it'll make this much more the, the yeah it'll enhance the experience thank you, you know as a matter of fact if you're just sitting around the house just put it on in the background yeah. turn the lights down a little bit get yourself a glass of wine mm-hmm. you know well again this may be easier to contemplate if you have been drinking and since we have already started uh we'll see if we can make heads or tails of this reddit users have been expressing quite a bit of confusion recently over a photo that was posted of a playmat designed for small children to help them learn the letters of the alphabet. And you can put that up any time, uh, Adam. The mat shows, a, you know, a drawing of an alligator next to A, which you would expect, right? A bear next to B, and so on. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's been some controversy around some of the letters. The letter N appears next to some sort of lizard or salamander, but one commenter suggested that it is probably actually a newt. <laughs> Not Newt Gingrich, but, but the animal, the, the newt, um, the reptile. Uh, the letter X is also quite confusing as it shows a fish with its skeleton visible beneath its scales. After much deliberation, one Reddit user finally mentioned that it could be an X-ray fish. Okay. Is that a thing? Is there such a thing as an x-ray fish? I think there might. I feel like I've heard of that before. Again, I feel like I'm giving our fact checkers a lot of work today. So uh, <laughs> maybe they can find out. Uh, the moose-looking creature next to the Y is apparently a yak. Yeah, I was going to say yak. It yeah. had to be, although that's a pretty bad picture. But the most troubling of all, apparently, was the splattered blob next to the letter U. Debate has raged. With plenty of questions <laughs> and potential Urchin, answers, maybe uh, is it the coronavirus? That doesn't <laughs> that doesn't start with you. Someone suggested ugly. A second suggested underwear stain. <laughs> Skid mark. Someone else said UV rays, and another suggested Uranus. Don't you see the brown star? Uh, Frank. Uh, finally, a Reddit. 
commenter seemed to answer the question by offering that it is probably an urchin, okay. as in uh, sea urchin, uh, but that it is, of course, very poorly drawn. Uh, here at Drinking News, we're no experts, but we're thinking that it looks more like an underwear stain than any of the other options. So we may just have to go with that. Not that we're experts on underwear stains either. Just, you know, just saying. Uh, <laughs> please, ladies and gentlemen. As Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young so wonderfully suggested, teach your children well. <laughs> drinking news, drinking news. Have them listen to drinking news. For all the facts that you want to find out, listen to Cruz in the end. Uh, that's all I can come up with. I was waiting for you to work underwear stain in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I was working on a spontaneous drinking news moment. It was pretty good. It was pretty good, I have to say. Uh, yeah. I, I, I you ran aground a little at the end, but it was good up until I, then. I had, I had just I, I had half wit right there. Like I had mm -hmm. just the first half of it and was Sometimes done. you have to go with it. That's how the best <laughs> things are created. Now it's time for drinking news. Cheers, y'all. <laughs> Man, um, uh, uh, Bruce is just on fire today with yeah. the comments. Uh, X-ray fish go by several names. X-ray tetras, golden. So there is such a thing as an X-ray yeah. fish. Water goldfinches and other stuff. Yeah, that's a. I mean, I don't envy him trying to come up with an animal that starts with an X. <laughs> right. I mean, that's that's pretty pretty difficult. Well, I mean, you should at least work on the illustrations a little bit because some of those illustrations yeah. are. Are pretty poor. I swear that that does look kind of look like the coronavirus that uh, <laughs> uh, that thing for you. Um, but still, underwear stain worked the best. That's not a very good picture of an urchin. Like I thought urchin because I I started like going through my Rolodex. You go through you animals right? yeah. with the letter U, and there aren't and, many. And that's all I could come up with. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, do you, uh, reminds me of the old joke. Uh, how is um, How's the Starship Enterprise like toilet paper? I remember this joke. I can't remember because the Because both of them circle Uranus looking for Klingons. Uh, it's so bad. That joke is so bad. A man walks into a bar, says, ouch. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, at, at one time we considered on this program a segment. I even went out and got puppets. We considered a segment called Puppets Smoking Cigars. And the whole concept of the uh, of the piece was going to be that one puppet would say to the other, what you smoking? And then the, the puppet would answer, and then they would tell a really, really bad joke. Like a two man walks into a bar joke. You know, one of those. <laughs> so, uh, but we never did flesh that idea out. Guys, let us know in the comments. Do you want us to start doing uh, puppet smoking cigars, or is that just a stupid I idea? I mean, that sounds... It is, a, it is a stupid idea, but is it a stupid idea you want or <laughs> well, not? Well, I mean, so is drinking news. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's become the most popular segment on the show, so uh, hard to tell. All right, Ian, what can you tell us uh, about Phase 3 Brewing's Imperial Porter? I mean, can you smell Porter? this already? This smells like burnt Holy coffee and moly. caramel. Holy moly. It, it has that... So or burnt caramel and coffee. A little both, actually. So what I was going to say is that uh, when I moved into the building where I live... Coffee. Uh, for the first year or so that I lived there, there was actually a coffee factory across maybe half a mile away from me in East Downtown that every morning when you would get up, you could smell that burnt roasted this is, coffee bean when I say flavor. And that's what this, this is, reminds this me is of. This is burnt closed now. roasted coffee bean. It's also like... Uh, 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 caramelized turbinado sugar. Look at, I leaned my glass over. <laughs> Look at what that. Left I haven't there. even tasted this, and I love it already. <laughs> There's um. So it's called pressed imperial porter, caramel macchiato. It is twelve percent, and it's from Phase Three Brewing Company. Uh, and apparently they use it's tugboat almost coffee. Like a, uh, like a hazelnutty thing going on in there. Mm -hmm. Phase Three Brewing Company out of uh, Lake Zurich, Illinois. They were one of the breweries mentioned in the uh, article that we, uh, the list that we referenced earlier in the show. Holy cow! Yeah, what are your thoughts? Have you tasted it? Mm, just about to. Holy I've only smelled it cow. so far. Um, this so first off on the nose, it has wow. so much. So much stuff going on in that burnt caramel, burnt um, uh, uh, turbinado sugar, burnt coffee. Mm -hmm. It's so pungent and, and in a good way, but the flavor on this is outstanding. Mm. It's got, it's almost like you charred the coffee beans. 
and, and then stuck your head chocolate. in there and added chocolate. Yeah. Man, this is wow. I had a feeling you would like this. What does it say on there? Uh, it is pressed imperial porter caramel macchiato, and it is twelve percent. You know what's interesting, Ian? We've had a number of imperial stouts on the show, and a lot of them have had some similar flavorings. But at twelve percent, this may have one of the lightest mouthfeels I've ever had for from uh, from a beverage. I'm expecting this thing to be thick and viscous, and it may look that way in the cup, and you may see the the ring that it leaves when you swirl it around the cup. But the mouthfeel itself, much more like a porter than like a stout. Therefore, you know, justifying this being called an imperial porter. Uh, I didn't want you to be left out, so I accidentally spilled some more of this. <laughs> but I did it into my glass. Mm -hmm. um, this is delicious. This is decadent. It does have some decadence it is to it. It's so it? Yeah. decadent. It's got so much bittersweet to it mm -hmm. um, and so much flavor. It's odd that it's that big. Now, we talk about the mouthfeel, and it's not a big, thick mouthfeel like you expect, but the, the flavor aftertaste, is big. Yes, yes. The aftertaste the is aftertaste big. The aftertaste especially just leaves you going, man. Mm. Uh, and this would stand up. I, I we talked about that AJ Man of War earlier. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you could put that. Oh, you, you easily. Could, you could put that or a diesel up against this oh, and yeah, still totally. be okay. You really could. Mm. I picked up a couple of those diesel Lajeros. Mm -hmm. So good. That's serious. The first one I had didn't burn very well, but the second one was just fine. The uh, it makes me think of the La Flor Dominicana um, uh, chisel. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, one's just brutal for brutal's uh, sake. Though. It really is. It's almost like it's trying so hard. What's to be funny is it's, it doesn't come across that viscous, but yet it sticks to the glass. Mm -hmm. Like you could probably, uh, you could probably like repair a ship with this. <laughs> you probably could. As far as just how sticky it is, it leaves my lips like super sticky. This mm -hmm. is this is awesome and delicious. I'm uh, I'm pretty darn happy with it myself. All right, while we enjoy this, uh, there's mm. a tequila report that has been prepared by our tequila expert, Liliana Rodriguez, and let me share this with you. Hold do on, do hold we on. have any tequila report theme we music? Need some Spanish music going yeah, on here. Yeah, yeah. Can, you, can you provide? Oh, I like it. I like it. That's the official tequila report theme song. <laughs> Reminds me of the old days on Letterman when uh, he, it, it, like back when he was on e NBC, where he'd go, Paul, do we have any theme music for Tequila Report? And Paul Schaefer would like just start playing something on the keyboard and go, Tequila Report! Yeah! So maybe you could add that to your flamenco music there. Tequila All right. Report. <laughs> All right. So, a tequila report from Liliana Rodriguez, who is our tequila expert. She's for smoking and toasting. Uh, Liliana reports that she visited the Specs location downtown Houston last week. This is the largest liquor store in Houston, maybe in the Lone Star State. Um, if you have ever been to Houston and you didn't go to Specs, you have done yourself a disservice. A disservice. For I don't sure. care where you are in Houston. Just Uber. To Specs downtown. You will walk into this store like a tourist in New York. It is so much a toy store for adults is what it is. It really is. Candy store for adults. Uh, so Liliana says while she was there, she had a nice conversation with Eduardo Cuadra, one of the managers. According to Eduardo, uh, there are currently about 2,700 tequilas on the market. Holy crap. Yeah. Of which Specs keeps about 400 in their inventory, which, if you think about it, that's a lot. 400 tequilas? One thing to have 400 different, like, you know, iterations of wine. Yeah. But 400 tequilas, that is a lot. So here's what they sell the most of Sousa 1800, Patron, Don Julio, Casa Amigos. And Michael Jordan's Sincoro. 
Was not expecting that no, name. No, I wasn't there. either. So, so we gotta we gotta uh, maybe try some of that. If I mean the fact that it's selling that much, I mean people aren't just buying tequila because Jordan's name is on it. That might get you one purchase, but it's not gonna get you enough to make I mean, the list. The shoes sell pretty well. Well, yeah, but that's different. You're wearing them, right? You're like, like, so, but the shoes would only sell once if they weren't good shoes, right? Uh, yeah, probably. Well, I mean, at least for the people, for the target yeah. audience that's buying them, right? So, uh, anyway, Liliana says she browsed through the store, and here are their five most expensive tequilas. Casa Azul Tequila Ultra Añejo. The 750 milliliter bottle is one thousand six hundred seventy nine dollars and forty six cents. I'm sorry, I only have a thousand six hundred seventy nine dollars and forty two cents. <laughs> My budget only goes to a thousand seven. Oh yeah, I'm I'm a little short. Uh, it's aged five years in previously uh, used cherry wood barrels from Spain. It's made on crystalline through a series of filtrations. The decanter is decorated with pure platinum, sterling silver, and twenty four karat gold. All right, things are starting to make a little more sense yeah, now. If you really want so to show So presentation is a lot yeah. of that. Uh, number two jumps down a little bit to $424.89. It is Herradura Cristalino, the 150th anniversary. It's aged eight years, which for tequila is quite a bit of aging, uh, and it's 424 Patron Extra Añejo Tequila, aged 10 years, is $298. Now, I've had the Patron Añejo a number of times, and it's delicious. Yep. Never had their extra Añejo, so that's uh, that's good. Casa Dragones Tequila Yovan Super Premium at $267.99 is number four, and I'm not at all familiar with this one. Tears of Lorona, which translates to... Uh, uh, Tears of the Rona. No, it actually means crying woman, apparently. Oh. It's an extra Añejo. It's $252.52. .52. Now, I will tell you, that, and that's Liliana's. Uh, it says, regards, Liliana. Uh, <laughs> uh, Liliana Caracraft. Um, I will tell you the best tequila I've ever had has been the um, extra Añejo Reserva de la Familia from... Um, uh, from Jose Cuervo. It's my favorite that I've ever had. It currently sits at about $145, I think, maybe a little more, because it keeps going up every time I go back and get another bottle. Uh, but I, I don't know, like, I, I would be hard pressed to pay that much to pay $200 plus dollars for a tequila. Is it really going to be that good? I need to try it first. Oh, that's, that's a tough one. Hey, you know, it kind of like, listen, how much was a, uh, like, we tried 30 year old Balveni. Mm hmm. How much was that bottle? A lot. I, I don't know how thousands. much. Thousands. You're going to think it's in the thousands, yes. Thousands. How good was it? It was outstanding. It, it's one of the best whiskeys I've ever had. However, thousands of dollars. Right. Man. Think how much other whiskey you could buy. How much Buffalo Trace could you buy for the cost of that <laughs> one bottle, right? You know? Right. I don't know. But anyway, there is your tequila report. And thank you, Ian, for the... Perfectly suited Tequila Report music. I'm not done yet. I got a solo. <laughs> I love it. All right, Chris Morris, let's see you come up with an alternate uh, uh, tequila, tequila Report song. Uh, that was really good. That was uh, actually really, really good. Ukulele um, solo. Any further thoughts on this uh, Phase 3 uh, pressed Imperial Porter. I'm for it. This is fantastic. This is uh, ridiculous. It's so sticky and sweet, mm -hmm. and I absolutely love it for its ridiculousness. This is um, a lot of fun. And oddly enough, it, look at look at how it sits in your in the bottom of your glass. Like it's just mm. like it's like glue, but it doesn't come across uh, when you drink it. Not at all. As that kind of heavy mouthfeel. It almost is a lighter mouthfeel than the shipyard pumpkin we had earlier. So uh, this is something where, as big as this is, this would be something where I could open a can of this and drink it over the course of an evening. And it mm -hmm. wouldn't take – I mean, you're not going to sit there and slam this down because it's just so much. I would almost never say this about a beer, but this almost tastes like it would be great over ice. <laughs> you know what I mean? You could probably get away with it. I mean, there's so little carbonation in this in the first place Yeah, that it probably – 
you know, I mean, if you wanted it to stay cold. Yeah. I mean, people do people do iced coffee all the time. This is right. very and coffee. This, this, this very is, like that, yeah. I'm going to put it out there. So uh, I, I truly believe that one of the best coffee porters in existence at the moment is Real Ale's Coffee Porter. Oh, they use so coffee. Mm. And it literally, when I tried it, it set the standard for coffee porter for me. Um, uh, coffee beers in general. Mm -hmm. This is so much more ridiculous than that. And this is one of the best coffee beers I've ever had. It's really good. Like, this is so good. Uh, as you, I believe, may have expressed earlier, I'm for it. La Llorona is an American folklore of a ghost who roams waterfront areas mourning her children whom she drowned. Mm. Well, that's a happy story. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> wow. Way to bring the show to a Yay! <laughs> Stuttering halt here. La Llorona. Uh, uh, all right. Well, we'll take our own uh, little break while we contemplate that, <laughs> and we'll be right back to wrap things up. Smoking and Justin, show number 254. We'll be right back. I do want to save a little of this for oh, holy Tom. Crap. No, I don't, holy have, to, cow, I don't have to drink any more of it if there's uh, not enough to save the whole Welcome back. It's smoking and toasting. Man, we've had some good stuff. All three of these beers have been terrific today. I think the beers have been good. I think it was a little bit of a mixed bag with the rum, but that's going to happen sometimes, you know. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this rum. I think <laughs> I think that the more I think about it, I, just it's not for me. Yeah, yeah, uh, and it's not my favorite style of rum either because I'm usually looking for those softer, rounder notes, and this definitely does not have softer or rounder notes. Um, Liliana checked in, I believe, on the show notes. Yes, uh, as children, if we didn't behave, our nanny used to tell us the La, the Lorona is coming to get you. <laughs> oh, that's the lady that drowns her children. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay, well, that'd be scary. That'd be <laughs> nice and scary. <laughs> uh, also, I uh, believe she mentioned something about tequila, did she not? Oh, she said uh, Reserva de la Familia is her favorite, too. Uh -huh. And then Bruce commented, he uh, wrote it down, he's going to get some. Oh, it's the best. It really is the best. It's not cheap, but it is the best. Um, well, Ian, I want to do a couple things here. Want to uh, first of all uh, send a huge thank you to uh, Adam on the Wheels of Steel, keeping us uh, float here uh, this week. That guy's cool. Uh, we will be back next week with um, Charlie Garrison from Garrison Brothers Whiskey. So one, I am so one of one about of that. the Garrison Brothers. Will Garrison, be with if us. you haven't had, if you have Garrison Brothers uh, available to you at your local store and you like whiskey. You need to just do yourself a favor. And here's the deal. Uh, the Balmora mm -hmm. is rated so high and it's incredibly expensive. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get that. Get anything that says Garrison Brothers on it. Oh, you're so right. Anything. Mm -hmm. They're all good. They are fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, we're looking looking forward to having Charlie on and seeing. I, dude, I'm going into this one excited goes. to begin with. Yeah. So, so this the, will be the third time they've been on the show. The first time, and our third representative from them. I was going to say first time with Charlie though. So this first is time very we, exciting. Right, right. So the first time we had Dayton Voss uh, on the show mm -hmm. when we did over at uh, right, I remember that at uh, Casa de Monte Cristo. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, the second time we had Aliana Branch, mm -hmm. and then this time we get Charlie. Yeah, third we're, time we're with Charlie. very excited about that. Actually, we've had himself. so much fun with both of them before. So yeah, yeah, absolutely awesome. Uh, the following week, we will uh, be out at um, President Presidential Cigars. Presidential Cigars. Yeah. Uh, and we will be there with the guys from Emperor's Cut uh, Cigars. So, you Presidential remember? Cigars, north of 1960 off yes. of uh, Kirkendall, is that mm -hmm. correct? I believe that's correct. So. And it's... Uh, it, it, these guys you can't spell Kirkendall if you're uh, uh, from around right. here, yeah, from not from around. If you're here. not from around here, you would look at it yeah. and go, "Yeah, I'm going to be over on Kai Kendall." <laughs> Kai Kendall, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, well, how uh, did a weird? I like, guess sounds like an Icelandic word or something. How every, did that get to be one of our? Every city has an area or a street or a word like that that <laughs> looks. Uh, what I loved about living up in Massachusetts, um, there's a city uh, to the west of Boston. Uh, that is W O R C H E S T E R, but it's not Worcester, it's Worcester. Yep. There's a suburb of Boston that is D O R C H E S T E R, but it's not Duster, it's Dorchester. 
So there's there's no rhyme no or reason. Talent. It's just it's just the way it is, you know. So anyway, uh, I don't know what got me off on that tangent, but uh, let's uh, let's say a big thank you though to everyone who uh, makes it to this part of the show. Thank you to our tequila expert Liliana Rodriguez, and I'm just actually going to have to have you pour me just. Uh, I can't toast with an empty cup there. Uh, oh, you want Ian? some of this? Yeah, yes, oh, there's still do. some in there. Yeah, just just a little. Yeah, yeah, just a little, just a little motor oil for me. Thank you. It looks like motor oil, but it goes down oh so good. Thank you guys. For for being here. We'll be back next week with Charlie Garrison from Garrison Brothers. And until we meet then, cheers, y'all.